Good evening, everyone. It's Deborah Hamilton, and you're at the MAP Community Call. I have had so many calls about the MAP plan from trust and estate attorneys this week. I'm thrilled because people must be really listening to these community calls and getting involved with caring for their pets. So I thought tonight I would answer questions for people who um, are on the call. And Rose, I know, has gotten several questions from people who listen to the video and uh, the audio and really want to make sure that they know what they're doing. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to check in with everybody before we start. So let me start with you, Dee. How's everything going? Are you finding putting together the plan um, logical? Yes. <laughs> I've got one more dog to do, and I wanted to share this with you. Sure. It goes on my refrigerator. Oh, um, fabulous. You get A++. <laughs> it's funny. I'm driving to Florida tomorrow, and in my car, it'll say that my dog is home. He's home with my husband, but I just always travel with telephone numbers stuck to the uh, dashboard, so uh, we, I, I'll bring that in next time and show everyone. Um, so Susan, how's Maggie? Maggie is good. Um, I met with a um, trainer on Monday and she's going to take Maggie for three weeks and work with her. She was actually able to get a, um, a leash on her uh, neck, one of those um, Flip -leash. Slide, on, slide on leashes. I'm yep. not sure what they're yep. called. And so it was an interesting evaluation and I do have a question. Sure. Absolutely. We're going to start and meet with everybody. So write your question down because if you're like me, you're going to forget. So write it down and we'll oh, get I'll put it in the chat. Then. Oh, perfect. Then we won't forget. And okay. then everybody will have the benefit of the questions in the chat. So if you have questions, you don't want to forget, put them in the chat. Rose will monitor it and, and give them to me. Um, Holly, how's everything with you? I know you're just out of training class. No, I'm on my way in, so I can't stay for long. Um, I've made great progress. What I wanted to um, let everybody know is that um, as a cyclist, um, I ever since Lance Armstrong has been here, I've worn this wrist thing on my wrist. It's called road ID. And if they find you on the side of a road because of whatever has happened, um, the emergency people dial into that and they get everything about you, for you, by you, and about you. And you can even upload documents onto it. And so you so, can upload your dog documents onto it. That plus they have dog ID. So wow. um, I put um, on the dog ID, my road ID pin number and emergency number so that um, the Everything about the dog is there. Belt, you know, the my map plan, everything. Awesome. So, well, if if you can send me the information about that, did you send me the link? Because if you haven't, I'll put it up um on the show notes so that everybody oh, okay. Can get um it. yeah, it's just um I'll send it to you. It's roadid.com. Okay, so Rose, you'll get that roadid.com and we'll put it in the show notes so everyone can get it because I don't think you need to be a cyclist to do it. I think that if you even walk your dog. Um, anybody, I mean, like it's yeah. like anybody can do it and it's the exact, exact same thing. I um, Like the carrying the document or the letter around is great, but this thing um, on my wrist, it goes into the network there and it, you can find... Phone numbers, secondary contract, contacts, my attorney's names, everything. Wow, that is really fabulous. I'm going to do a, a piece on that. I'm going to have to write up about that on the MAP um, community. So that's really, thank you for sharing that, um, Holly. And I know you were short time, so I'm so glad you got here. And I'm so yeah. glad you're getting through the program. And I um, am, am still uh, going to work with your attorney when I hear from them. And that'll be fun, too. That'll be an experience. Remember, every. She's a dog person. So, so um, yeah, we'll get along very well. You'll get along fine. Yeah, absolutely. So Stephanie, welcome. Do you want to tell us um, where you're from and who your dogs are? You don't have to. We don't make anyone talk. They can just stand by and hear all the things we do. Uh, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Good. So where are you from and um, what kind of pets do you have? 
Um, I'm from Toronto and I have a cat. Oh, wonderful. We love cats here. We do. We absolutely love cats here. I have a grand kitty, so um, I am thrilled. And is your cat an indoor cat, an outdoor cat, or both? Uh, both. Fabulous. Well, then that collar that Holly was talking about may be something you want to look into so that you can keep track of your baby. Um, is your is your cat microchip? Um, No. Well, you might want to consider that simply that, you know, if God forbid she gets picked up, they can find you. Um, of course, you probably have a collar on her with a, a tag with her name and your telephone number. So that's great. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I think this is the first time you're here. So you'll hear a lot tonight. Um, I will I will start by letting you know that MAP stands for Make a Plan, Appoint Caregivers, Address the Needs of Your Pet, and then Publish That Plan with Others. Um, so we make sure that everybody knows what to do to plan for the care of their pets long-term, short-term. Um, we, we always make plans for our pets if we pass away. However, as we talk about here, things happen, we call them the Ds, um, divorce, delay, disease, disaster, um, dementia, deployment, domestic violence, um, uh, disability, and disasters. I got them all. I'm so proud of myself. Um, so all of those things can befall us and we're not dead yet. Uh, so we have to make a plan for our pets that sit outside our trust and estate documents as well as inside. So tonight, Stephanie, what you want to do is, um, Dee Dee, hold up your form again. Oh, Stephanie might not pass, be able to see it, but hold it up anyway. Stephanie, you might um, see this. I always tell everyone to put a note somewhere very visible that says, in case of an emergency, do not remove my pet. Um, these pets are to be um, left in the house and you have three names either on the piece of paper, like um, Dee Dee is showing us, or says my three names are in a file. And usually I like to use a brightly colored file. Thanks, Dee Dee, you're the best. Uh, usually I like to use a brightly colored file so that they don't have to think about it so that you'll have someone there to make sure that they can get in touch with them. If something, Oh, I love that red file. I am, I am into red, um, lime green, um, and chartreuse. I love the pink ones. The pink ones are like my favorite, the ones that light up in the dark, they drive me nuts, but then nobody's going to miss it. Uh, because what we want to do is make sure that our pets, stay put. Now your cat's an indoor outdoor cat. So they, you know, are pretty lively and, and fun. And so you want to make sure that people know that that cat is going to do just fine. Um, and that you have either um, a neighbor who is going to make sure they have food or a family member who's going to have food um, or a friend who's going to come over to give it food and water. So it's it's not that they need to take it because God forbid something happened to you. Um, so that's why I always uh, make sure that people have uh, that little sign up. If you are a newbie, I always say this is what we're going to do. Um, oh, good. Rose has put the link for the road ID. Um, in the chat, if anybody wants to just hit on it, it'll go right there on your computer and then you can come back and join and rejoin us. Um, so tonight I wanted to um, answer some questions. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Dee Dee. Dee Dee, do you have any questions that you have? Not at this time. As soon as I'm finished at doing and completing the stage that I'm at with this plan, I will probably have a whole lot more. Great. So I'll collect them for for next week. Oh, great. Wonderful. Susan, you said you had a question. Unmute. I put it in the chat if you want okay, to take so a look. The trainer asked us if we want to use a shock collar on Maggie. She showed me what she would use as only a gentle shock if it would help us manage her barking. Um, so uh, it's always good to know what the collar does. So usually shock collars start with a vibration, um, then they go to a sound, um, and then they go to... Um, sort of a, an unpleasant zap, I call it. Um, and since she's a Catan, she's a small dog. So you want to be careful that it's used correctly. I would definitely ask her to show you what it feels like, um, because you want to feel the vibration that Maggie would feel 
at the beginning and then the beeping that you would hear and she would hear. Um, and then of course, if she doesn't respond to either of those, you go to the next level, but hopefully Maggie will respond to vibration. Um, and I would also really recommend, and I recommend this to everyone. If you're having someone helping you train a dog that has some issues, ask them to let you talk to some of their, um, their past clients uh, and make sure you have talked to people because you really want to know um, how they are, you know, they, uh, their, their reputation. It's very important. Um, so it's always good to check them out. Um, and uh, I, Susan, I don't know where you found the trainer, uh, but was she recommended by your vet or your groomer, or you just found her online? Yeah, I found her online through checkbook. I was looking for kennel and um, she was associated with the kennel. It was one of the top rated kennels. And um, well, that's good. So then you can call the kennel and ask them what their experience has been with clients using her as a trainer. Yeah, that's true. That That's a good idea to do that. Um, you want to do some homework. Most people don't spend enough time learning about their pets um, or learning about the trainers for their pets. And it really is important to make sure that um, you uh, know what their protocols are. And I would suggest because, I mean, in hunting, uh, Junie is a master hunter, uh, they use um, uh, radio frequency collars, uh, but it's always on vibrate. Um, yes, vibrate uh, because, or excuse me, the vibrate's the last one. It's always on sound. So you, they hear something and then they stop. They know when they hear that they need to stop. And that's not intrusive in their body. So you don't want to go to, you know, right to a zap you want to give them the opportunity to feel a gentle vibration. Then you want to have them hear um, a beeping. And then if they really are ignoring you, as Maggie is one to do, but we hope she uh, decides that that's not what she wants to do, uh, then they go to the you know correction. Um, so you really need to know how many chances she will give Maggie to behave before she goes to correction. Um she did show it to you. Oh, good. And and did you feel it on your hand? I did. It was very gentle. And, you know, I want to believe that it's okay to do this. I had looked at this once before with sit means sit um, trainers. And I kind of rejected it because I had a bad experience with another um, dog using the shock collar. And well, shock collars are different from vibration collars. So shock collars really give them a sharp jolt, sort of like the invisible fence that tells you, you know, it beeps first and then it vibrates first and then it beeps. Um, and then it shocks you if you go near the fence. Uh, so shock collars are different. My sister actually uses a collar that looks like a hockey puck. Uh, the dog wears a, a, a collar and my sister carries this hockey puck thing with her. Um, and it gently reminds the dog. She actually scratches where it vibrates. She's like, she always stops and scratches. Uh, but it it reminds her that she has to listen to my sister when my sister says come or my sister says sit or my sister says heal it reminds her to come. Um, so this will be great. The only thing I would absolutely recommend is that you um, make sure uh, that you work with Maggie with the trainer. So the trainer can take the dog for two or three weeks, which is great. And she'll be able to get Maggie to do everything. But then it would really behoove you to spend at least a week or 10 days every day training with the trainer um, because the trainer knows what to do and will pick up on your um, reticence to do something. So they will make you strong so that what you've paid for for two or three weeks will not be pitched out the window um, because you're not, you don't know what to do to get Maggie to behave. So it's really important that you do the same thing. And I don't know if she told you about that. She didn't mention that. No. And that's the most important piece because I always in Armonk where I used to live, there was a guy who not only sold people dogs, he found dogs at puppy mills all over the country and sold them for like twice what he got them for. But then he had a 
puppy sitting and he had a puppy training and he never had the people come to the puppy training. So he, of course, like anyone here who's trained a dog, Holly's trained a dog to the highest level. Um, Jan has trained Tonka. Didi, I don't know if you've trained your dogs in obedience, but if you're not doing it, they're not listening to you. You are not the alpha dog. Um, you need to be the alpha. And it doesn't mean that you, you know, smack the snot out of them. Yes, one minute, Didi. Not that you smack the snot out of them, but that you are the person who has that voice, who has that calmness to get your dog to do what it is that they're supposed to do. Yes, Didi. The other thing is, is the things that the dog is learning from you are perishable. Yes. And you have to constantly be working with them to make sure that they don't forget. And it's a game. It's not like it, you know, this is a, a regimen. It's sort of like physical therapy. If you've ever had a body part, you know, removed, which I have and replaced, you're really supposed to do physical therapy every day to keep that momentum up of the muscle memory. So think of once Maggie comes home, she's going to have a certain kind of muscle memory for behaving. And yeah. what you need is to gain that muscle memory. It's like having a physical therapist come to the house after surgery. So after you have the surgery, God forbid, done on Maggie with the trainer, you need her to come and then train you on what she trained Maggie to do. Um, Jan. Unmute. Yeah. So I would reiterate that. The other thing is, I don't know about Maggie, but it sounds like she might because Tonka does is Tonka kind of pushes the envelope. It's like oh, Maggie, it, Maggie slits the envelope with a knife. She doesn't. Right. Really like, I mean, he knows what to do, but he'll still, and he's 12 and there's still things like he has to sit before he eats yeah, and be quiet. And he'll like, be like this. Cause he wants to get the food and I'll be like, uh, uh-uh. uh, you know better. And he's 12 and I've had him since he was five months. So he's smart enough and knows, but he's going to try to push it as far as he can. And then the other thing is whoever else is in the household, they should also be involved because yes, we want the behavior to be the same behavior to be reiterated by everybody. So yeah, he's right. getting the same message from every person. Consistency, that, right, right. I, everybody. Absolutely. I fully appreciate it. She described Maggie as a very weak and fearful dog, even though she walks around like the king, queen of Sheba. She's really uh, very fearful. And um, yeah. So this is really good information for everyone, because if you do want a trainer to come in and Holly, jump in here anytime you want. Holly's got some of the top obedience Irish okay. setter. Well, OK, I don't I don't use um, an electric collar. Well, OK, with Thunder, I don't use it unless um, they're like it's a life and death situation. Well, I use it. It is sort of a life and death because they can't touch her. Oh, the, you can't. Well, well, we can touch oh. her, but she won't let us get a, a leash on her. She won't. She's very. Yeah. I mean, she's a COVID puppy, Holly. So she's been not necessarily socialized as well as some of the dogs. And and Susan's wonderful and has been trying and speaking to a number of the experts that we have here at the MAP community. Um, so she's done a great job with um, trying to find the right people. So now I think. It, it's consistency and it's it's sort of and and Holly, you know this, you've been doing this. So you know when you get a puppy home or you get a kitten home for Stephanie, you have to really let them know what it is you expect of them. I don't want them on the counters eating the food. Okay. If with this with this being the case, I'd get on the internet and I'd uh dial up Sue Garrett's crate games. Um, Lynn Godsell uses Sue Garrett, but she uses all kinds of games and you can get the dog to enjoy going into a crate and then the dog comes out, you put the collar on, yay, and that type of thing over and over again. Um, I don't know if I use a shock collar to deal with this. Well, um, I, I absolutely 
um, hear you because that's the next, hopefully Susan, what you can ask your trainer is to try a week without a shot collar and see if she can get Maggie to do it with repetition and food and praise, because that's always what you want to do. And if she is reticent and, re and reluctant to do anything for the trainer, I mean, I wouldn't start with, um, a, a shot collar or for lack of a better word, a little bit of a training collar. I would, I mean, yeah. I've never started my dogs on a training collar. However, if somebody was stronger than me or I was nervous that they were going to bite me or others, um, it, I have to tell you that the only time I had a male dog argument was when my invisible fence was zapping my two boys as they were barking on the line uh, because they were being zapped. And so sometimes that brings out even a little more aggression when yeah, they find more fear and more fear. So it's always something to talk to the trainer about and say, listen, can we do, you know, if she's going to be there three weeks, that's 21 days. Can we do 10 days without the shock collar, see how it works. Um, and then maybe not have to do it at all. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, if that's your default, you're always going to go to that. Cause I know for me, um, you know, as, as with every human, whatever makes it easier. So if you, you shock the dog, it's def definitely might make it easier for you, but it won't be a long-term fix. I don't, I don't in this situation, I mean, you could put a muzzle on the dog so you don't get bitten. Yeah. But she can't even get that on. So that's the problem. They can't get that on. So Maggie's just a little bit of a, a worrisome. Um, so uh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a I've got a scoot though because I got to get into the class. That's so, good. Um, you go. I'm so glad you were here. Yeah, I'll see you later. Bye, Merry everybody. Christmas, Bye. happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Yep, Happy New Year. We'll see. well, I'll see you next week if you're if you're before you go into class if you want. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I want to ask um, Stephanie if she has any questions regarding her cat, because I love dogs and we mostly talk about dogs as everybody's here about dogs, but it really is important for Stephanie and thank God she's here um, and all the other people who have cats to know that cats need care as well. Um, it really is important to make, and I don't know, Dee, if you have cats as well as dogs. Um, I have a, as I said, I have a grand kitty and my son has made a plan for his cat. So do you have anyone, Stephanie, Stephanie, that you've lined up beside family members um, to care for your cat if something were to happen long term or short term? Uh, yes, we have a lot of neighbors that um, have been like involved throughout their entire life. Oh, wonderful. Well, what you... Yeah. What you what you want to do is you want to make sure that whoever the neighbors are that are going to care for the pet, they know what their job is and who's who's on first, who's on second, who's on third, so that they don't think they know what's going on. If you if you commit and make the plan, which is the M, if you make the plan, so if something happens to me, I'd like Mary Lou to take care of the cat. And then if Mary Lou can't, then Susie. And then if Susie can't, Tom, um, so that you give everybody direction. And then of course, addressing the needs of the cat is, so she goes in and out all day and she eats this kind of food and she needs her heartworm or her tick medication on this day. So that people know what the needs of your pet are on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. Um, you have to tell your vet, that's the published part. You have to tell your vet who the people are who could bring your cat to them for care. And you have to tell the people, the appointed people, all about the, you know, what are the idiosyncrasies of your wonderful cats and when they get their medication, if they get any, um, what vet they go to, you know, who to call, because there could be, we call them the nosy neighbor. There could be the short-term person who just says, leave the cat alone. We know who to get it to. Um, and then there's the long-term person who's going to take care of the cat. Um, while you might be away, you might be delayed, you know, all of us, unfortunately, I'm sure have been delayed by aircraft um, in our lives for a significant amount of time. So if you can't get back to your animal, you need somebody who can still be there for delays. Um, if you're ill, uh, some of us get sick and, you know, COVID was a great wake up call for everyone to know that they needed to make a plan for the care of their pets. Because if they go to the hospital thinking, well, I just have a cold and then they're admitted and put on a ventilator, um, their pet might be removed by animal care and control because they can't be reached. So you always want to make sure that those notes, um, like the one that Dee Dee put up, is somewhere you can see so that if people know you have a cat and your family is there, and 
the reason I only use some family and need some people outside the family, like your neighbors, is because if you're sick or a family member is sick, you're going to want to be with that family member and they're going to want to be with you. Um, so to have somebody outside the family as well to care for the pet is just phenomenal. I remember when my husband broke his shoulder, I never thought I would kick my um, map plant into uh, uh, action, but it really was tiring taking care of someone who was in so much pain post, you know, like 10 screws and three plates or something. It was terrible. Um, he was in so much pain. It gave me peace of mind that I could really focus on him. And yet my dogs were walked three times a day by people who were my map people so that they could, the dogs would be walked and I wouldn't have to worry. So that's the kind of thing you want to do with your cat. You just want to make sure that everybody knows um, and Stephanie, what's your cat's name? Do you just have one or you have a few? Yoda. Yoda. Oh, I love that name. That's a great name. So, and, you know, they have to know Yoda. It's very important. And Yoda has to know them so that Yoda knows that when they're there, that's a good sign um, that they have food and they have water and they have everything else. Um, so I had a few questions before. Let me ask Sally, how's everything going with her? She came on late. How are you doing, Sally? Well, we're a little chilly here. Um, however, the girls, uh, I have turned the heat up and the girls, well, uh, Athena's wearing two coats in the house and has two quilts and Roxy could care less, but she's a little jealous when I put the coats on Athena. So she wants coats on also. Yeah. Just because, you know, it must be the fashion statement of the universe. There you go. But it, it's chilly and I kind of watch them and I watch how all of a sudden, when one of them starts to dance on the uh, cold um, dirt or the uh, um, grass, we turn around and go home. And they're yeah. great communicators because I carry a toy in each pocket. And when they want to go home, they come up and uh, nudge the pockets. And that means we want to go home. Yeah. And give them Perfect. A toy and that, that's, uh, you know, go into reverse. We're going back. Oh, you know, it's it, it's funny when I mean, Jan said the Tonka at 12 pushes the edge of the envelope. I know that both Athena and Roxy push the edge of the envelope every minute of every day. Uh, they're 12 and 13. It's sort of that that old dog syndrome um, because they figure you're not getting rid of me. I'm going to be here for the dura duration. And now I'm going to ignore every rule you've ever set for me and see how far I can push it. Uh, and you know what? They often win. Jan has held strong on her sip before I feed you. However, I'm sure there are a few things that Tonk is doing that he didn't do when he was a younger dog that she goes, it's not worth it. He's an old guy. I'm just going to let him get away with it. Um, but I want to uh, show Susan and everyone else that the um, Sue Garrett's information on Crate Games is in the chat so that if you want to get that. Um, and also uh, Jan posted a great trainer um, linked canine coaching. So you might want to check in. What you want to always do if you're hiring a trainer, if you're hiring a groom, or if you're going to a kennel, you really want to check the online reviews and you want to see if they're recommended by wherever you found them because you know people are out there doing wonderful work and then there are people out there doing not so wonderful work um and it doesn't guarantee that the person you're working with is fabulous uh it just means that if five or six people have posted five-star reviews, some of them may be their family, but most of the time it's legitimate um, and you're getting a good start. And if you feel in your bones that this is not right, um, don't go. I have to tell you that there was a woman in uh, Port Chester Obedience in New York uh, who, when I took my first Irish setter to obedience class, would throw empty uh, soda bottles, you know, the big leader bottles at the dogs while they were on their sit stays and down stays so they wouldn't break. Um, and I thought that this was probably not appropriate, but here I was, I was like in my twenties and this was an a old time, um, uh, person and, uh, uh she, you know, more than me. And I learned through that experience that you absolutely never, ever, ever, um, uh, make sure that you follow your gut. You always follow your gut. If you don't think it's right, if you don't think the person is, you know, really following the same goals that you want, then just say thank you very much and walk away. 
No, I agree. You, you're making perfect sense. And, you know, I did get a good feeling about it. She spent an hour looking at Maggie, working with her. And um, I did kind of get a gut feeling that she would be uh, very good at working with Maggie, setting boundaries. Yeah. That well, that's good. That's good because Maggie needs boundaries. And then you need to know the boundaries that Maggie is um, setting or that she's setting for Maggie. Right. And she, yeah, I, you know, she said she would spend a, a week just trying to gain trust with Maggie. Yep. Before doing any kind of training. Yeah, I, I was kind of desperate because my vet called and they canceled the grooming. Um for Maggie, unless she was fully sedated. Um, she's getting a bad reputation with yeah, people. So we have to nip that in the bud. So let's hope that this person will be someone you can work with long-term because Maggie is two and a half now, right? Or three? Well, she's three. She's three. So she didn't get here overnight. No. Um, got here three years. I always say, you know, especially me losing weight. I didn't get here last night. I didn't eat one thing and blew up and got fat. No, it's been years. I've been, I've been eating too much for years. So we have to recognize that whatever our dogs are doing right or wrong, if they've been doing it for a number of years, we're not going to fix it in three weeks. We're going to fix it in three months, maybe. Um, dogs do learn new things in two weeks. If you do it consistently for about 10 minutes a day, maybe twice a day, five minutes a day, twice a day, they will learn something new. Cats are the same way. If you do something with them um, repetitively and it's a, a joyful thing, it's not a punishment thing. I mean, none of our dogs respond to negativity. So that's why the collar would be the last resort. Hopefully the trainer will use positive reinforcement first to see if Maggie will say, Ooh, this works for me. I'm getting fed or whatever, uh, before she uses the zap collar you know, zap collars work really quickly to have the dogs decide they're not going to do something. But I will tell you um, that dogs know when that collar is off. And, uh, you know, I know that um, my dog Quincy, who I loved pieces, always knew when the invisible fence collar was off uh, because she would test her invisible fence collar every day of her life. And you would think, why would she want to walk up to the fence and be zapped? Well, because if she walked up to the fence and she wasn't zapped, she'd walk right through. Now, this is years. She was years with this fence. And every single day she would walk up to see if it worked. So she was the only one who always had to have a new battery like every month. <laughs> she would test it. So Maggie will probably be like Quincy in that she's going to test you every day. And yeah. it might take a year to where she resigns herself to the fact that, you know, she can't pull it over on you. I'm sure Dee Dee and Sally and, and Jan and even Stephanie, if she's trained her cats to do certain things, it's consistency, it's repetition. And I couldn't agree more with everything you're saying. I think it's because of the barking. She just kind of wears you down to a frazzle yeah. that you just like, you're so overwhelmed that it's hard to really well, it was, it was it's, it's really funny. They do have bar collars. And, and I have to say that um, I bought one because my um, co-owner on one of my puppy girls told me that she was going to bark incessantly all the way home on the drive to Colorado. And I said, I will drop her off on the side of the road and tie her to a post if she barks incessantly on the way home. I have a low threshold for barking. So I bought this collar. And of course, she didn't make a peep. She didn't make a peep the whole way home. I spent all this money on this collar and she didn't make a peep and she never made a peep. She never barked at all. And so my co-owner said, I can't believe she's not barking. You've heard her bark. You've been on the phone when she's been barking incessantly in the back. I said, yes, which is why I bought the bark collar. And P.S. She just, you know, she must have heard, felt the vibration from me that I was not a good bark mother. Um, and she never opened her mouth ever. I mean, she hardly ever barked when somebody rang the doorbell. Um, wow. So, you know, they do pick up from you uh, the energy. So what you'll have to gain from the trainer as well is the confidence to hold Maggie to what she's learning. That's going to be key. Um, so that's why you're going to need the trainer to come and help you almost as long. And it'll be well worth it. It'll be your Christmas present to yourself. Um, almost as long as she has Maggie in her care, because 
I have to tell you that unless we shift the way we do things with our dogs, our dogs are going to take advantage of every single thing we could do um, to mess shit up. Let me tell you, they will. Um, I had one question that I want to answer uh, before. So one of the questions was, what do you do if um, your cat or dog is owned with someone else? You know, what happens? Uh, do they get the dog outright if you get sick? Do they return the dog if you have possession? What's the story? And what I usually say is if if you and someone else own an animal together, um, you want to just make sure you have in writing what happens if something happens to you, if you have possession of the dog. If you don't have possession of the dog, but you want to be there as the person, the first person in line to get the dog or the cat. Um, and this is absolutely for you, Stephanie, with all the neighbors who want to help you with your cat. You really need to have something in writing that says in the event that, you know, I can't take care of my dog or my cat, I want to give it to Susan. And if Susan can't take it, I'm going to give it to Jan. And if Jan can't take it, I'm going to give it to Sally. And if Susan is is not a, a co-owner with me, but Jan is, then, you know, we have to speak to Jan and say, listen, Susan lives right next door or she lives a mile away or she's, you know, doesn't work and she can come and take care of the dog immediately and you live in the next state or whatever. Um, so that the co-owner understands that they're not losing their co-ownership because the dog is with Susan. Rather, that's that immediate person who's going to care for the pet. And then if it's long-term, then Jan, the co-owner, might be the best person for that long-term care. Uh, but you have to be transparent. You have to talk about it. Don't try to do it behind somebody's back. Like Sally, she could make all these plans with all these people in Connecticut. Um, and no one would call me and I'd be like, but wait a minute the girls are supposed to come home and we have, I know they'll never come home. I know, but um, we have the agreement that if God forbid anything comes her way and there's a breakdown and nobody's there to take care of the dogs, my son who lives in Brooklyn would be up in a flash. And then I would be up from North Carolina um, because I know that the most important thing for Sally and Gordon is to make sure um, that uh that uh, Roxy and Athena are cared for. Um, and as, as Sally will attest, she can have everything in place, everything, and triple backed up. And then no one will be able to care for the dogs. It is, it is like she has been my poster child for always having three of everything. And even that hasn't necessarily been enough, right, Sally? I was actually talking to my girlfriend, Audrey, who is a retired animal control officer about that yesterday. And she said, you know, Sally, it's different in every state. So just make sure you, and I said, it's gotta be in writing. You have to like have your vet know what's going on and all the people on the list. And every single time you go away for two days or a night or whatever, contact everyone because one never knows what may happen in a nanosecond. You know, that one night you go out to dinner and you've got the dog sitter. It's like, oh my goodness. But as, if you've got everything in place and all you have to do is just send out an email and it does change slightly each time. You know, somebody could have gone home for Christmas or someone could be, you know, on a work trip and then um, that person's off. But if your vet knows and the and the people know who's going to pay for medical care, if it's an older dog and sick, yeah, very important. Yeah, you have to just update it constantly. It's and, not that hard. No, and, and it, it simply means that you have everybody communicate with each other and be transparent and know where they sit. So Stephanie, this is for you. If you have so many people who want to help, that's great. But make sure you give some sort of direction so that everyone's not rushing in and stepping on each other's toes and bad humor happens and blah, blah. What you want to do is you want to make sure, well, you're first. And if you can't get here, then you're second. If you can't get here, then he's third. Uh, so that everybody knows... And in fact, if the first person says, oh my God, I can't get there, but I know I can call person two or person three, then they also can make sure that everything is cared for for the pet. Um, it is just so important to put this in place to make sure that your pets are cared for. And the P stands for publish, which means, and Sally said it several times, I said it several times, you need to make sure um, that you tell your veterinarian and your attorney, because 
every time something occurs, there might be that naysayer who says, Deborah didn't mean that, she meant this. Well, if you told your veterinarian and you've told your attorney, there are two people who are contemporaneous with your plan, who know exactly what it is you wanted to do. So Dee Dee could say, well, you know, Deborah's the first person who will bring my dog in if something happens, but if she can't do it, then it's going to be Jan. And if Jan can't do it, then it's going to be Sally. And those three people can come in and I guarantee I will pay for whatever care they say the dog or cats need, because otherwise, the vet's really not supposed to care for your pet because the um, vet client patient relationship, the VCPR is with you. So you really need to make sure everybody knows. So um, Susan has the last question because I can't, I still can't believe this goes by too fast. Um, should I have a written? Oh, absolutely. And you should put down and um, I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm going to be going to um, Florida for a big dog show. Uh, and in my car, as I said, will be the sign that says Junie is home. And if something happens to me, please call and make sure he's cared for. Although I know that Jim is looking forward to it, my husband, because Junie tends to uh, pay attention to him when I'm not home. So he's looking forward to three days where he actually owns a dog and the dog actually pays attention to him. So he's having, he's doing the happy dance. Um, but uh, I, I absolutely, and it should, she should have, if she's a good trainer, she should have a contract for you to sign. Um, and it should include all the things that she says she's going to provide for Maggie. Um, Maggie's supposed to be returned to you. And what happens if, God forbid, Maggie's injured in her care? So these are all things, you know, she should really have a contract if she's a real trainer. Um, she should really have a contract that she offered to you to outline what she's going to do for those three weeks, how much it's going to cost, what happens if Maggie gets injured, what happens if Maggie gets sick, because she wants to know what vet you go to, um, or you need to know what vet she goes to if she doesn't go to your vet. So these are all important questions to ask her. Um, and if I have a chance tomorrow to jot some things down and send them to you, Susan, text me and I will um, make sure I try to do that, because you really should have have the agreement. It doesn't have to be a nine page uh, diatribe. It simply has to outline your expectations, her expectations, um, and transparency on the care of Maggie. That's what's going to be the most important. So before I wrap up, last questions. Uh, Jan, you have a question? Dee Dee? No questions. Um, Stephanie, do you have any questions about the cat care? Because I love cats. Do you have any questions or did I um, scare you to death? Oh, no further questions. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you come back. Sally, any remaining questions? Um, yeah. You know, if I decide to go away for Christmas, could you just come up and take care of two elderly dogs and walk Absolutely. on the and snow? You know. Oh, you know. Okay, great. You no, know I will be there because it's snowing there and I love snow. And here in North Carolina, it was um, 37 degrees this morning. Um, and everyone's complaining how cold it is. And I said, no, this is my temperature. This is my temperature. I am a happy woman right now. Um, and all my neighbors are freezing. Um, so Susan, I will do that. And um, until next time, this is Deborah Hamilton, uh, Hamilton, ADR, North Carolina, and also my wonderful, um, my wonderful MAP community. Don't forget to listen to the new WhatsApp, uh, the What's, um, God. It's terrible. My brain is gone. Um, Why do pets matter podcast? Because it just is chock full of information. Um, and you'll find out so much about the care of pets from veterinarians, from trainers, from, from breeders, from everyone, from everyone. So don't forget to go. Um, and until next week, uh, kiss your dogs for me. Didi, I have, I don't remember your dog's names. You'll have to tell me. Um, Well, Annabella is the main one. My okay. Brother. Perfect. I know because you have like nine, right? So, so I would never remember nine. I have a hard time remembering breakfast. Yeah. So, uh, so Annabella, and then we have Tonka, and that's Jan's, and then we have Athena and Roxy, who I will never forget. Um, we have Yoda, and we have, of course, the Miss Maggie, who we will fix um, <laughs> gently and kindly. Uh, by the end of 2023. It's a mission. Thank we you. Have. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night. Bye.